This is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is why a furnace blower motor continues to run and blow cold air all through the building. So even when the thermostat is not calling for heat, air conditioning, or fan to turn on, that blower motor continues to run, and we're going to be discussing those reasons coming up. Reason number one is that an electrical safety switch has tripped uh, due to a problem. You could have switches like this, or you could have uh, ones like these right here. So this is a draft temperature switch, and this is making sure that you don't have a clog in the exhaust pipe. Here is a uh, thermal limit switch, and this is making sure that the heat exchanger area does not get overheated. And down here you have a flame rollout switch to make sure that you don't have any flames popping back due to a crack in the heat exchanger. And so what you want to do is you want to look down here in this hole and take a look at the LED status code light for the error code. Even if the error code is signifying that one of these switches is the problem, you could also have a low pressure LP gas switch installed. So this is in the case of a propane gas furnace and this would open up the electrical circuit if the propane tank is low on gas or if the gas valve is turned off. So what I've done is I've turned the power off to the furnace, I've disconnected our blower motor taps from the cool and heat terminals right here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to be testing for the safety switches. So you see these two wires right here. These are the two red uh, safety switch wires. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one probe in right here, which would be, I believe, the common. And then I'm going to turn the power on to the furnace. What I'm doing right now is just making sure that the blower motor doesn't turn on, even though there is an error. And so I'm going to put my first tab right here. And you see that we're measuring 26 volts. And once again, we're measuring 26 volts. That means that that switch is closed. Let's see up here. That one right there is closed. Still closed. That one's closed because we still have 26 volts right down at our multimeter. Now we're going to take our measurement point from over here on the low pressure switch. And you see we're measuring 26 volts at the input. And on the other side of the switch, you see we're measuring zero volts. So right now, our low pressure switch is the one that's at fault. Or we have no propane in the tank, and which has caused this low pressure switch to open up. Problem number two is when you have a thermostat that's accidentally telling the blower motor to turn on, even when you have it set on auto and off. So just say that this switch was not on on and the blower motor was running. What you could do is you could just remove the, the thermostat face itself. And if you remove it and then the blower motor shuts off, then you know that the thermostat face is the problem. Problem number three is when the thermostat wire is the problem. So in this case, you see I just have a short section of wire right here from the control board to the thermostat, just to show you, but this would typically be running through the building. But if somewhere's in the building, the thermostat wire was squished by a staple or maybe chewed by a mouse or something like that, it could be accidentally connecting the R and G wires. So what I'll do is I'm gonna measure with my multimeter to see if we do have power from G to common. So what we do right here is we should always have from common to R24 volts. So we got 28 volts right there, and we should have zero volts right now from G to C, but we actually have 28 volts. And that's due to this thermostat wire because there's nothing else that would be connecting uh, this G wire to the R. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the power off to this furnace. So now we can check electrical resistance between the R and the G, and we should have no electrical resistance. In this case though, you see we have 1.2 ohms, so those two wires are connected, and that's the problem with why our control board was getting a 24 volt signal on the G telling the control board to turn the blower motor on. 
So just remember that the thermostat and the thermostat wiring is, is really acting like a switch to connect the R wire to one of the signal wires. G, anytime R connects to G, that's for fan. Anytime R connects to W, that's for heat. And anytime R connects to Y, that's for air conditioning mode. So in this case, what we're gonna need to do is replace this thermostat wire. Problem number four is inside this black relay right here, you could have welded shut contacts, which mean that it's always going to be allowing power to the blower motor. So this is the blower motor speed in cooling mode, and then this is in heating mode. So what I'm gonna do in order to test that is let's turn this power on to the furnace. And if you have a solid status code light and you have no power on the G terminal, so see you have zero volts there, and you have no power on the W or the Y, but you do have 120 volts down here on this relay or on this one right here on this contact, then you know that inside this box, that relay, basically the contacts are welded together. Uh, in this case, you can see when we measure over on the common and to our cooling tap, we have zero volts. And from our common to our heat tap, we have once again, zero volts. So that's what it should have. So in this case, this black box and the relay contacts are good. Problem number five is for furnaces that have a fan limit control instead of a control board down below. So right here, this is a gas valve and electronic ignition module altogether. And some older furnaces had a uh, fan limit control in order to control when the blower motor turns on and turns off and acted as a limit switch, kind of like that limit switch back there. So I want to take you in for an up close view of this, but first I just want to show you some of these have a, a push for manual. So if that's pushed in, then the blower motor is just going to continue to run. And if you pull it out, that's what's going to keep it on auto. When you remove the cover plate, you're going to see this dial and you're going to have three little temperature adjustments right here. The third one, that is the high temperature limit. So if this bimetal right here senses that the temperature is higher than 160 degrees, what's gonna happen is the blower motor is gonna continue to run, but it's gonna shut off the gas. And this right here, you have it set at about 115 to 120, and that's when the blower motor turns on. And then what happens is right here, you should have this set for about 90 degrees. And so this is where our problem lies at. Either that this bimetal right here is kind of worn out due to expansion and contraction, or this temperature right here is set down too low. If this is set down near 70 degrees and it's 70 degrees in the house, then it's going to allow the blower motor to just continue and continue to run. And so you want to have this set up at 90 degrees. If this is out of parameters a little bit, what you could do is you could try to adjust this up just a little bit higher, maybe to say 95 degrees, but really you want to go ahead and replace the fan limit control. Problem number six is when you have an ECM blower motor that doesn't turn off, and that could just be due to this hub or module assembly here, or it could be due to the control board. And so some furnaces are equipped with ECM blower motors. In this case, it's a uh, 2.3, and the 2.3 has a 16 pin connector right here. And so these have power all the time, high voltage power, but the signal down here for the blower motor to turn on is communicated between the control board and the module itself. And so once again, that's a 2.3. This is a 3.0 version. And here we have a X13 model. So that's a ECM multi-speed motor. So what I'm gonna do for this test is I'm gonna be using a TechMate Pro in order to signal this blower motor to turn on and I'm going to show you what happens even after I remove uh, the control this particular ECM motor is just going to continue to run. So this TechMate Pro comes with a 16 pin connector here and a 4 pin connector here and so the 4 pin is for the 3.0 version and then the 16 pin connector is for the 2.3 version and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this blower motor on now by telling it and giving it a signal right over here on the 16 pin connector. Now I'm gonna tell it to shut off. However, you see that it's not shutting off and I can even remove the communication wires and it's still not shutting off. So a ECM blower motor may fail in a manner where it receives a signal to turn on but never ends up shutting off. 
So you gotta remember that you're always gonna have your, your main power hot up over here, but this is your uh, signal communication for when the blower motor turns on and turns off. In this case, this motor module is gonna have to get replaced. So I hope this video helped, and if you wanna learn more about blower motor troubleshooting, we have other videos linked down in the description section below. We also have articles written over the website at acservicetech.com, and we also have calculators, quizzes, podcasts. We've got quick tips. Make sure you check all those out over at acservicetech.com, and hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.